Raider Nation, what's going on? You guys are watching the Raiders Report, and today's show is presented by Automobis. If you love the hoodie I got on, if you want some brand new Raiders gear, all you got to do is go to automabis.com and make sure you click Enter the Abyss to save 20% off on your shopping. I mean, let's face it, holidays, they're right around the corner. So what we're going to be talking about here on today's show is the latest going on around OBJ and if the Raiders should be interested, Deshaun Jackson, what's the latest on him and what's the possibility that he could be in some silver and black. I got the latest news and rumors around some potential injuries. We're also going to talk about the Giants since that's who we're going up against in week nine. And then at the very end of today's show, more on the, I guess, heartbreaking news around Henry Ruggs. The first thing, though, we are going to talk about is Odell. And because not only we talk about Raiders, we also have to talk about the NFL. And if something could potentially impact this team, guess what? I'm going to do my best to cover it. So his dad posted a video of him getting open and Mayfield not throwing to him essentially on Twitter. Yeah, and then he was excused from practice on Wednesday and today on Thursday. And there's been some reports out there that, hey, it could happen. Maybe the Browns decide to move on from Odell Beckham Jr. So what I found, and shout out to my boss James for sending this to me, goes, have you seen the latest OBJ destinations if he gets released by the Browns? And I was like, you know what? I haven't. Guess who's number one? Yeah, you got it. The Raiders at plus 350. Then it's the Baltimore Ravens at plus 400. Saints at plus 450. The Bills at plus 500. The Patriots are plus 500. We're also going to be throwing out a video on chat sports. So if you want to see where we think that OBJ could end up landing, remember, go ahead and subscribe to that channel, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. So this is going to be the pin comment on today's video. Should the Raiders be interested in Odell Beckham Jr. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. You're going to get hit with a YouTube ad break. While that ad is playing, I want you to scroll on down and type OBJ for yes or no BJ for no. I'm going to go ahead and type OBJ for yes, and I can't really believe I'm saying it because for the longest time I've been here like, I don't think OBJ is very good. I think he's overrated. I still think that he is overrated. But just because he is overrated, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not a good player. Now, I will say this. If the Raiders end up making a move for him, we're going to be making a video, and we're probably going to be going live. That I can almost guarantee. So if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell right underneath this bad boy. That way you never miss a thing. And I'm trying to get to 100,000 subs. We only need 5,000 586 more so shout out to jeremy for coming up with this new saying because i'm going to start using it a lot more just sub baby let's get to a hundred thousand subs here on the raiders report so should the raiders be interested in obj i'm going to go ahead and give this one four no chucky heads and i'm going to say believe it baby when you see reports out there that the raiders and the saints could be the teams that are the most interested i'm like all right yeah i can understand that raiders lost henry ruggs the saints they ended up losing michael thomas the fact that lost Vegas has only three active receivers on the roster makes me nervous which you know I, I mean I have confidence in Zay I have confidence in Brian and I have co confidence in Renfro we also decided to add Marcel Leitman back to the practice squad and we're protecting Javon Wims there's also Dylan Stoner you're also protecting G DJ St Turner but I mean we got to be able to face the facts here if one of these guys goes down with an injury we're in trouble. And for a football team that's 5-2, first place in the AFC West, you're obviously competing for a playoff spot here. So I know what I've said before about OBJ. I still think that, yes, he is a little bit overrated. You're not really going to get what you had from the New York Giants. But I used to always say, no, I don't want Beckham because I didn't want to trade for him, give up draft capital, and then you bring on his ridiculous contract. If he's released and there's a potential to sign up for a cheaper deal or to go out and get him in the waiver, that's a totally different discussion. So OBG stats with the Browns. This season he's got 17 grabs, 232 yards, no touchdowns. The other reason why I think that he actually could get released, when you look at all the drama going on now, plus the Browns were actually better last season without Beckham, and the whole drama going on between him and Baker right now is very interesting. But a lot of times, people don't really think of OBJ as this type of player, the Browns guy that you've seen the last three years. Everyone goes back and they're like, well, he was the dude that had the 
ramen noodle looking hair and was incredible his first three years in the NFL. I mean, you could really make an argument. His first three years in the NFL where he had over 90 catches, over 1,300 yards, and over 10 touchdowns in every single year, he was a top five receiver. He actually might have been one of the most dominant receivers I have ever seen as a rookie. But games missed, 21 games missed the last five years, and he's missed 25 games since 2017. So he's not quite the same player that the ACL injury had. But could the Raiders use a receiver? Yes. Do I still think that he could fit in a style of offense that this team runs? Yes, he is still a good athlete. But there's a lot of other things that go into this equation. OBJ would be subject to waivers if the Browns cut him. What exactly does that mean? So that means he's going to hit the waiver, just similar like I talked about yesterday with Deshaun Jackson. And an NFL team, the Raiders, would need just over $8 million of salary cap room to claim him. The reason why that, that is an issue is because as it stands right now per over the cap, the Raiders have about $3.8 in cap room. Could they potentially cut a guy? Sure. Could you restructure somebody's contract like they've done plenty of times with other players? Absolutely. But here's the other thing. I don't really know if there's going to be other teams that are like, you know what, I'm going to go out, I'm going to pay OBJ's current salary, we're going to pay the rest of it, and we're going to be happy. Would you pay OBJ $8 million? Some teams will probably say yes to that. Contenders, though, there's not many contenders that have that money. So you could see him go through waivers. You could see him make it through, become a free agent. That's when a lot of other teams, that's when it's going to be an absolute feeding frenzy. And that's when I know the Raiders will be interested. The next receiver we're going to talk about here is Deshaun Jackson. He was released by the Rams on Tuesday and subject to waivers. And we've been kind of waiting to see what exactly is going to be happening with Jackson. And I expect to get some news here on Thursday. But just like I just asked y'all with OBJ, no BJ, should the Raiders be interested in Deshaun Jackson? Why for yes and for no? Yesterday, I said, yes, the, the, the Raiders absolutely should be interested in Jackson. But now today, with all this new news around OBJ, is it the same answer? I'm going to tell you what my answer is. But first, I do want to give some major love to today's other sponsor, Panda Subs. If you haven't gotten the hookup yet, make sure you do. Go to pandasubs.com, 40% off, and use code Raiders at checkout because it's a hell of a deal. Now, if anybody out there is trying to get into better shape, they just released some brand new supplements. It's called the Pandemic. You get it? It's a pre-workout. It is the strongest pre-workout on the market. It comes in peach mango. It also comes in sour gummy. It is absolutely must try. But if you're not used to a lot of caffeine, I recommend just maybe taking like a half a scoop because this stuff is really going to kick your butt. And on top of the 40%, if you use code WORKOUT, every single person that goes to pandasups.com and use code RAIDERS, excuse me, use code RAIDERS, you're going to get a free shaker with every order. So not only are we giving you 40% off, we're also just going to throw in a free Panda Sup shaker because they just released some. And I'm not going to lie, this is perfect timing because my shaker smells terrible. Maybe we should go ahead and get Koopa Shaker as well. Use code Raiders at checkout. Pandasups.com, hooking up the nation with the best deals on the internet. All right, in terms of overall, should the Raiders be interested in Deshaun Jackson? This one's another four no Chucky heads. Believe it, baby. The team needs to try to replace Ruggs' speed. That's as simple as could be. This offense was dynamic. Derek Carr was having a career year because even when the ball wasn't in Ruggs' hands, teams had to respect it, and they had to basically try to bracket cover him. If they didn't, Ruggs burned him for a touchdown. Now, Jackson, he can still be a field stretcher. And I know I made a video about potential Ruggs replacements. You're not ever going to be able to replace Ruggs, at least not this year, right? Free agency next year? Yeah, that's a different story. But what I really like about Jackson is that speed. And for everyone's like, oh, he's old, he's, he's washed up. He's not the same receiver that he was a few years ago. But he definitely still has the speed. Is he 100% healthy? That's definitely another concern. Because when you look at the numbers the last two years, sure, he's missed a lot of games. 2020, 14 grabs, 236 yards, right? 2019, nine catches. The issue is this. You're not going to get probably the receiver that had over 1,000 yards or all those glory days that he had back in the day but you are still going to have a field stretcher. Yards per catch, and I'm going to show you all his yards per catch per year. This season sure is a little bit of a fluke at 27.6, but on Jackson's long 75-yard touchdown run, he actually hit a peak speed that he has only hit one other time in his entire career, according to Next Gen Stats, and that was back in 2016, which 
hey, he was putting up some good numbers. But basically every single year over here, minus one, over 13.4. What about 2016 to 2012? All I'm showing you is his entire career. He has been a field stretcher, and he's been somebody that can take the top off of a defense. So that's why I'm sitting here saying, yes, the Raiders absolutely need to be interested in Jackson. They better have put in a claim for him because that his contract, I would take on in a heartbeat only $3 million or whatever it is and change at this point. Take it on because he can really help your offense. But here's the other question now. If you're the Raiders, you have two roster spots open. So hypothetically speaking, if you wanted to try to get both of these guys, you could. But that's a little bit too easy, and that's kind of an easy way out. So I want you guys to be – let's be a little bit more pe peculiar. Is that the right word? Sure. You can only pick one, Deshaun Jackson type D, or I want you to type O if you'd rather have Odell Beckham Jr. If we're talking about just talent and everyone's healthy, I still think the answer is OBJ. I really do think that Beckham is the better overall receiver. But if you are a little bit worried about money, and if we're talking about who's the guy that's more likely, it's absolutely Deshaun Jackson. He's the better bang for your buck. This is, again, if you're just putting in a claim, OBJ, a little over $8 million. Deshaun Jackson, a little over $3 million. For that price difference, I will go ahead and say that Jackson is the better bang for your buck and the more likely one to happen. Now, if you guys love my Tom Flores hoodie, remember, Christmas, it's going to be here quicker than what you think. Also, Hanukkah, um, all those other holidays in between, Thanksgiving. Go to AutumnAbyss.com. We got great Raiders gift ideas and portions of all these proceeds. Remember. They go to benefits. So this uh, shirt helps the Marshawn Lynch Foundation with kids in Oakland and try to get sports and education. The Tom Flores hoodie goes back to uh, supporting Tom Flores' foundation. I don't remember what the Bo Jackson one does. I should probably look that one up. But the bottom line is this stuff feels better than dry fit. Yes, and I'm serious. It feels better than dry fit. It also looks pretty awesome, too. Go to AutumnAbyss.com for high-quality Raiders apparel. Now, we also got some Raiders news. We're also going to talk about the New York Giants as well. And it seemed a little bit funny when I looked at the Raiders injury report and I saw only two names and we'll get into those two names, but obviously you got the New York Giants week nine. It's been a hell of a week. There's no doubt about that. The Giants are also dealing with some of their stuff going on too. So right before I filmed today's show, Adam Schefter went on Twitter and said Giants canceled in facility meetings for players this morning and closed their office to non-football staff. Football meetings are being conducted virtually. Players, unless their test results are still being assessed under the COVID protocols, will return this afternoon. Now, remember, yesterday the Giants had this just huge COVID thing. I believe it was like 13 players ended up testing. Sure, there might have been some uh, false negatives or false positives in there. But the real injury to really keep tabs on is running back Saquon Barkley. And the fact that he's potentially not going to be able to get into the facility and not be able to get the treatment that he needs the next two days, that's going to be a major loss to that offense. Now, the only two players on the Raiders injury report as of Thursday, Jonathan Hankins and John Simpson, both were listed as full participants on Wednesday, which kind of sounds like to me that we're getting back to healthy. Now, a few people were like, oh, that means Richie Incognito is going to play. Well, let's not, let's not get carried away. I get that he wasn't listed on the injury report, but he's still on IR, so the Raiders don't have to put him there. The latest report is he's apparently making progress. That is the quote for quote from Rich Basaccia. He is apparently making process, progress. If that gives you confidence, I, I wish you could come to Vegas with me and bet because we're going to be spending a lot of money that apparently we could be making progress here. But... I, I don't see Richie playing this week. There's been reports that he's unlikely to go. I do not know if he's ever going to play again. So let's look into that crystal ball. Do you think Incognito is going to play this season? Type P for play, type NP for not playing. I've seen some Raiders Instagram accounts out there like, oh, yeah, he's going to play. I've seen some guys on Twitter saying the same thing. At this point, he's been nursing a calf injury for almost a calf strain for almost three months. I'm not sure when he's going to come back, if he ever does, especially since he missed 14 games last year with an Achilles injury. Also, as promised here at the top, I wouldn't be doing my job as a Raiders report host if I wasn't talking about probably the biggest Raiders story in the last, I don't know, decade, or it's probably one of the biggest NFL stories that we've seen in a long time. We got some more updates on Henry Ruggs. He was going 110 miles per hour over the speed limit during his accident. When the airbags deployed, he was doing 127. He hit a speed of 156. Ruggs' car drove Tina Tinter. Scar 252 feet after impact. So when 520, excuse me. So when the car hit the other car, it then drove it 520 feet. That's nuts. 
Hugs, Ruggs' blood alcohol level was 0.161, which was twice the legal limit. It was also taken two hours after the accident, so it's probably even higher. Ruggs, the 23-year-old girl Tina, and her dog, unfortunately, they did pass away. She was trapped in the vehicle after the accident, which is absolutely horrifying. Ruggs was, un was uncooperative with police and was so drunk that when he was asked, do you know what happened, he responded with, he just shook his head and closed his eyes. The last thing we'll talk about here is Ruggs bail was set at 100. It was actually set, excuse me, Ruggs bail was at 150K, although the state had requested a $1 million bond. Order to abstain from alcohol and other controlled substances and then order to not drive slash surrender his passport. Now, a lot of stuff happened this week. We're always going to keep you guys up to date. If we get any more breaking news this week, Hopefully around the Raiders potentially going out and signing a player. We're going to keep you updated. Let's get to 100,000 subs. So just sub, baby.